There are many things I've talked about on this channel, various topics, but one topic I've not addressed yet is the role that spirituality plays in the recovery process. Today, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. And as I begin to share some thoughts about spirituality and recovery, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel and to click the bell to be notified of future videos. Addiction, no matter whether it's addiction to alcohol or drugs or things like gambling or sex, addiction is always a complicated process. It's a process that impacts an individual physiologically, psychologically, and spiritually. Physiologically, addiction processes impact the way our brain works. It changes the neurochemicals that are produced and the amount of the neurochemicals produced and, and causes us to think in, in ways that are often self-destructive. In addition, addiction leads us to all kinds of emotional issues. We start feeling things uh, a bit differently, like we're more mistrusting of other people. Uh, we may become paranoid. Uh, we begin thinking in a tunnel way. We ended up, end up breaking relationships. All kinds of things happen emotionally in, when we're an, an addict. And spiritually, in an addiction, the most important thing for an addict is getting the fix with whatever that substance is, whether that's alcohol or gambling or whatever it may be. And because of that, all sense of purpose, all sense of meaning in life just falls away because there's only one thing meaningful, and that's getting the high from that addictive substance. Recovery from addiction is a long and complicated process. It's a process that, that goes through two major phases, if you will. The first phase is really just trying to stop the addictive behavior, to gain some sense of sobriety in the face of the addiction. Because it's only when there's a level of sobriety that a person can move into the next phase, and that's a, a time of really looking through all the stuff that led to the addiction and fuels the addiction. For many people, not for everybody, but for many people, the addiction is rooted in some sort of pain in life. So that pain may be something like some trauma that was experienced. It may be that life fell apart. And because of what happened, people begin to use uh, whatever their choice is as a way of easing that pain. And if it wasn't a direct pain, maybe it was something like we experienced during the COVID pandemic, that life changed so radically so quickly and we were in our homes, not able to go out and socialize the way we were used to. And so we filled in our time and got involved with, you know, having a, a, a cocktail every evening or beginning online gambling or whatever it was we did. And that process, again, sort of a self-medicating of the boredom led into an addiction. So there are all kinds of, of difficulties in life that can lay the groundwork for addiction you know, feeling a sense of unworthiness, feeling like you're not good enough. And part of the process of recovery is really getting at that stuff. And that stuff that I'm referring to can be pretty different one person to another. Now, there are, of course, all kinds of different ways that people go through recovery. There are some who simply quit and move on with their life. But many people use 12-step programs. Other people use rational recovery. There are those who use the red road to sobriety. Some work with therapists and psychiatrists. And whatever way has worked for them, of course, people are very loyal to that method for recovery. But the thing is about all these different recovery programs, Research shows that all of them, out of all of them, none of them are any more effective than maybe about 27 or 28 percent of the time. Uh, so, you know, addiction is difficult. 
Think for a moment of trying to change anything in your life. Just changing a way you think about something or a pattern that you have, and you know it takes effort. So imagine from that perspective what it's like to change something that has consumed all of your life, that's changed how your brain's functioning and your emotions and how you're feeling about life. And it becomes an enormous task. And that's part of why many people end up relapsing as they're trying to recover. It's a hard process. So I think people who experience an addiction really deserve a lot of compassion both because something led to the addiction as well as the recovery process is really a hard process. And they should be admired for engaging in that process. Now, what role does spirituality play in the recovery process? In particular, I want to talk about three things, three things that I think are critical when we look at spirituality and recovery. And the first has to do with hope. As I've talked about in other videos, hope is an essential part of, of spirituality, of the spiritual dimension of our life. Hope is what enables us to look up and see something more in life. That something more in the addiction process, in, in the recovery process, I should say, may simply be the hope to get through the next day without using. Or it may be the hope to experience the companionship that's felt within the recovery group. Or it may be the hope to do something kind for another person. Hope for all of us starts small. And we begin to build on that hope so that we make it part of our life. I talk about that in particular in the video, Hope, a practice for life, and how we start hope in simple things and build that hope so that it becomes characteristic in our life. A second aspect for the role of spirituality in the recovery process is that essentially spirituality taps into our ability to create meaning and purpose in life. Addiction takes away meaning and purpose in life. And part of what's important about spirituality is it helps us find that we have something to live for what we begin understanding that we're living for may be very simple and it may be tightly tied to the recovery process. Maybe it will be about making amends with people we hope hurt and perhaps being able to reconcile relationships that were important for us. Perhaps that will be, you know, making a contribution to other people, using our skills in ways that are beneficial. Hope may be at work in creating this meaning and purpose. They're, they're really tied together because that meaning and purpose is going to come for us as we engage in positive ways in life again. And we find that sense of meaning that we created for ourselves. And the third dimension that's important for spirituality and recovery process is to remember that spiritual practice leads to our being healthier. And we know that especially in terms of meditation, that meditation helps to regulate the neurochemicals in our brain. So it increases the serotonin level and the oxytocin level so that we literally feel better, our emotions function better, we can think more positively. And it also helps our cardiovascular system, lowering our blood pressure and helping us to be heart healthy. So it's important to think of meditation as a practice that's not only spiritually relevant, but it's for a healthy brain and for a healthy heart. And I talk about that in the video, meditation and a healthier mind and body. So as we think about spirituality and the role and its role in recovery. I think it's critical to think about the importance of hope, of finding meaning, and the way spiritual practice, particularly meditation, leads to that healthier mind and body. Thanks for your time today. Subscribe to the channel, leave me some comments, like the video, share this video with others, 
and know that I really appreciate that you took a few minutes to be with me today. Thank you.